My name is Matthew Bronson, and I'm an Associate Professor and Director of Academic Assessment at the California Institute of Integral Studies in San Francisco, where um, I'm trained as a linguist, and I've been looking at the areas of language and consciousness and Native American and indigenous worldview for uh, some 25 years or so. And I met Dan Moonhawk Alford in 1982 at the University of California Berkeley Linguistics Department and um, went to this class of his that was taught at UC Extension in San Francisco and instantly just felt that kind of special chemistry that happens, I think, occasionally, if you're lucky, you know, at least once in your life, of a soulmate, heartfelt collaboration. Um, we're very, very different people. Uh, I was very, tend to be very animated and passionate and move around a lot and Dan is, uh, was incredibly laid back and relaxed and very kinesthetic and had this um, beautiful resonant baritone voice that he would just um, beguile people with. And he introduced me to the Native American worldview, Native American languages, and especially the work of Benjamin Lee Worf, who was circulated like um, sort of a taboo pamphlet that you didn't want to be caught with, you know, by, by the guards or something. And because it wasn't officially taught, it was sort of being suppressed at that point in linguistics. And it instantly made sense to me because I had actually gotten into linguistics because I was fascinated by the idea that the language that we speak has a lot to do with the way that we experience reality. That through habituated um, patterns of well-worn grooves of thought and language, that this is the basis that creates the reality that we live in most of the time, but it goes unquestioned because language is the medium that we move in. So Dan and I, that began a, a collaboration that lasted 20 years and he invited me to come and teach a course for him, with him, um, at the California Cinematical Studies. I was the TA, and we systematically went through the work of Worf, and then gradually over time we shaped the course to be not just an introduction to Worf studies, but a solid introduction in language and culture, anthropological linguistics, with a strong focus on how this actually applied to the issues that were affecting people's lives. And then in 1992, Dan was part of the Fetzer Dialogues, which you may have the history of. It's certainly available in the documentary record. That was really Leroy Little Bear and David Peat getting together over at Harvard. And David Peat had lamented that you really couldn't express the essence of quantum physics in English. But, and, and Leroy Little Bear was in looking into it, realized that a lot of the problems conceptually that were presented by trying to talk about these things in English were much more amenable in Blackfoot. Um, and so the book Blackfoot Physics came out of that. And so then in 1998, Dan had the idea to um, pick up on that thread of discussion. Because during those discussions, they came up with some really powerful insights, and it was important in a number of ways. I think first of all because it would be the first time in 500 years that I know of, that we know of, where scientists and native elders were in dialogue as equals. That's dramatic. That's, that's life-changing. I mean that, that's a, an earthquake in the, in the context of this post-colonial moment because the standard model within academia has tended to be, and generally still is, that you get some interesting idea, say you're an anthropologist or an anthropological linguist, and you have some sort of empirical or theoretical question, and then you find some culture of the world, and you parachute down in for a year or two and um, extract the knowledge from the brown people, and go back home, write it up, get yourself a cushy job, hit the lecture circuit, and this is really, it was really quite different because this was a, a dialogue launched in a spirit of respect where the scientists were the ones that are in pain, essentially, because their maps have uh, run out. You know, it's like in those old medieval times when 
you see the known world and then everywhere else it says here be monsters you know it's like you're off the map um, that's the the moment in 21st century science I think that well, late 20th century 21st century science that this dialogue was launched in was um, the understanding that the representation systems of just talking about subject verb object and the way that English segmented the world wasn't going to get us to the next step of really being able to visualize and conceptualize these invisible realms of reality and so that was the promise and so from those initial dialogues they came up with some interesting cross-cultural equations for example or some principles that they could all agree on one was that um, everything vibrates everything is vibration everything is energy the indigenous scientists and the and the western scientists were in absolute agreement on that point and they came up with an interesting cross-cultural equation that what Native America has called the realm of spirit, what linguists call meaning, and what quantum physicists call the quantum realm, may very well be the same thing with notational variations. It's a notational variant, but they're all pointing towards a realm of interpenetrating simultaneous connections that undergird the everyday reality. And um, that was a pretty exciting proposition because it doesn't necessarily seem intuitively obvious to everybody that this might be the case, that there would be this amazing congruence among these different groups.